Hey guys, it is Nick here, and I picked up a few things, I'm going to show them to you guys, and I'm going to talk about something, because something has been announced that was part of my childhood, but I'll talk about it in a minute. First of all, um, I got not one, one of them is still in the packaging, but I got two KJV Bibles, thanks to my friend and my pastor, Greg Miller, um, he's, I believe his channel is BBBF Ohio, um, so if you're you know, fellow Bible believer, you know, he, he I mean, I, I trust his teachings, I trust that he's not one of those corrupt pastors, and that, that's, you know, as a Christian, people might assume that I go to church, and I don't really go to church, because it's like, I, I'm, the only way I can describe it is I'm paranoid, it's like, how do I know that this preacher isn't preaching something that's not true, and you know, but for what I've seen, you know, this guy does speak the truth, and you know, I, I've been friends with him for a while, and he's helped me through some rough times, so I really appreciate it. So I'm giving a big shout out to PBBF Ohio, or Bible Believers Fellowship Ohio. And yeah, I don't live in Ohio, but you know, I, I do technically don't go to church, because I do watch his videos on YouTube. He records some of his um, church meetings, so uh, let me move the webcam over here. Actually, I'm going to have to move it anyways, because I did get some really huge... And uh, it's not a guitar, but it is an amplifier. Yeah, this is this is awesome. So this that is a Spider 4 120 by Line 6. Um, I've always been a Line 6 guy. Started out with the small Marshall amp, which I actually I actually still have. I haven't used it in a long time, but um, I I used to have a Spider 2. I think it was like a 75 watt amp, I think, but uh. When I got this pedal board that's on the floor here from a guitar shop, I um, I didn't know it didn't work with the Spider 2. It kind of did, but not all the features of it did. And, you know, I looked up the manual and it even said, you know, you need a Spider 4. So I, I picked up one, you know, made some payments on it, and now I got it. So, awesome. I'll start making some tunes off of that. There are some things I don't like about it, and I'll talk about that some other time. But uh, maybe I'll do like a review on it or something. But um, I picked up a couple CDs. Um, this one, Counting Crows, Recovering the Satellites. I've never even listened to a song by this band, or if I have it, it's on the radio and I just didn't know the band. But I found the book for it, a couple... Oh, I don't know where it is right now. Uh, somewhere around here. But they, I found the sheet music book for it. Oh, it's in the drawer over there. But I found the sheet music book for it last weekend, and it was only $2. So I thought, hey, you know... Nothing wrong with learning some new music, especially if it only costs two bucks. So, um, I got that, and I have, I'll have to listen to it. I don't know how it is. Um, yesterday, I actually went on a marathon through Seattle. I mean, I, I didn't run for, like, a charity or anything, but what happened was, you know, my sister and my dad, they went to a car show, and I, they actually invited me in, but I'm not a car guy, and I just thought, no, I'll just walk around Seattle. I mean, and, you know, my dad, my dad always tells me to be careful, which, you know, I, I appreciate that he's concerned about me. He could just say, well, go get yourself killed, but... Um, I went, you know, I mean, this car show is at Quest Field, and I walked all the way to, uh, I went to the library for the first time, I've, you know, I've lived here for several years, and I haven't even, you know, I've never even went to the library, but, um, because I, I haven't really had a use, and I went there, and it was a cool-looking place, in fact, maybe next time I go, I'll, I'll do a video, if they even allow that, they may not want me to film in there, I've noticed a lot of places are like that especially in Seattle, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was a pretty cool looking place, I, I got a little, you know, uh, acrophobic, I think it's the term, you know, afraid of heights, when I was at the top, but, you know, I, it's like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, you know, I, I kind of call myself down, um, but after that, you know, I, I did a couple things, and, uh, I did get a CD, Alan Parsons Project, I Robot, um, I only like, like, one or two songs off here, but to be fair, I haven't listened to all the songs, and Turn of a Friendly Card, that was like the best, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, then I did get another CD, and this is The Beatles' Yellow Submarine, and I actually used to have the CD, and then my sister took it, and I never saw it again. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to it, but uh, nice to have it again. For eight bucks, that is a steal, because... In Seattle, anyways, all the CD stores I go to, all the, all the Beatles albums are at least like twenty dollars, and I know they're like one of the most popular bands of all time. But, jeez, um, I did pick up a game. 
first of all, though, let me show you this book I got. It's Eric Clapton Unplugged, and now it's like my second copy. So why do I have two copies of this? Um, the other one I have is a deluxe edition where there's three extra songs and guitar parts I've been added. Because I, I guess the problem with this book, I heard a lot of people complain that, because this is the normal release that I picked up, but people were complaining that some guitar parts were missing, and some of the transcriptions weren't accurate, so Hal Leonard actually just cleaned up the transcriptions and they added, you know, three new songs, and that's the deluxe edition. But this one, it's pretty cool. Um, and there's a price tag here for Music Trader. I've never seen this place, so I don't know. But if you look at that front cover, in it's you know it, in normal writing it says transcribed by then in you know all capitals it says Jesse Grass like oh my god you know okay I, okay I will remember that name um okay so you guys want to see the game I picked up okay well like I this is a game I used to own actually I don't know where it went I actually got it at Walmart it was like in like was it was kind of like a jewel case except like it folded in and out maybe you know what I'm talking about but found it in the box and you know I don't have it anymore so it's nice to have it again but Doom Collector's Edition and if I can get OBS to work with this I might I might even do some playthroughs but um I mean after all I am Doom Master although that's just my character which people haven't heard from in quite a long time I don't know I'm gonna have to drag him back in here I don't I don't know where he's been but uh, there's also a so this has the Ultimate Doom, Doom 2 and Final Doom but, and I think it has a preview for Tomb 3, but I already got that game. In fact, I actually own the BFG edition, but... And I thought maybe I needed... Because I got it when I had XP and it didn't work, and then I found out you needed 7. So it's like, okay, after I install 7, I could play but I still have the same error. So I don't know what's going on, but I'd like to play it. I mean, I, I heard it's not as good as the original game, but I want to try it out for myself. Because I'm usually a guy who likes crappy games, so... Yeah, I admitted that. I mean, I'm the guy who admitted I like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde right in front of the ABGN himself. So, I mean, I've got cojones. But anyways, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some nostalgia again. I do have the CD for Doom 2. I just, I don't know where it is right now. But um, Ultimate Doom and uh, Final Doom, I've never seen physical copies of them. And in fact, if anyone's selling Final Doom for uh, the PlayStation, I would actually be interested um, I'm not going to pay an outrageous price for it, but I mean, I would be interested if I can get it cheap enough. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and um, before I go, there is one... Oh yeah, I want to talk about something from my childhood before I go. I don't, I don't know how I almost forgot. And this is project... project... product placement. It's the choice of a new generation. Okay, I know that was Pepsi. Okay. Anyway, so Markiplier did a video, and you're like, wait a minute, Markiplier, I thought you wanted to subscribe for him. Yes, I did. But I forgot to unlike his Facebook page. And people ask, well, wait, why are you not watching him anymore? Why do you unsubscribe? I will talk about that later. Now is not the time, but I will talk about that later. Um, anyways. Um, so, he did a video with Jack Black and his son, and they were playing... Well, his son was playing Five Nights at Freddy's 4, and... Um, Jack Black, let's face it, he pretty much just did that just to advertise the new Goosebumps movie. And holy crap, I loved reading those books as a kid. I had, like, nearly every single one of them. But the fact that they're making a movie about it, I think we can all assume Hollywood's just going to screw it up. Because if Hollywood can't find their own original ideas that suck anyway, they're just going to take something else that's good, and they'll assume, well, that'll be it, it can't be a bad movie because it's based on something good. Oh, I'm going to be surprised. Look at the Ninja Turtles. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but you see what they did to them in the last movie? I couldn't even look at them. I ran out of the theater, and I was crying and sobbing, and I was going all Nicolas Cage and everything. I, ow. But I just can't... I can't see myself watching this movie and actually liking it, you know? It, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going to watch it, you know? That's the thing. I'm not even going to pay to see it. Because I'm pretty sure it's bad. And also... When Mark Potter was doing this video with Jack Black and his son, they were in a dark room, and Jack Black, you know, was wearing sunglasses, and I, I'm not going to say he was, but he kind of was like, it was kind almost like he was high. I can't really complain, since that's kind of legal now, but I mean, at least in Seattle, Mark Potter, I don't think, lives in Seattle, but, um, you know, it's like, 
or Washington, I should say, Potsley, Washington. But yeah, it's like he's he, he kind of sounds like he's high, but he may not he may not have been. I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, I actually saw a video a few months ago with they were interviewing Eddie Vedder in the '90s, and you could tell he was just high. And he's just kind of laughing. It was just funny. Am I the only one who thinks he he looks like the dude now? I mean, I, I think he does, but um, yeah. So it sucks that they're gonna be that Hollywood is gonna screw up another part of my childhood. But you know, they've already done it so much. I'm kind of accustomed to it now. Like my brain has turned on the poop switch and yeah, the diarrhea dial and everything. Um, now there's one last thing before I go. Um, this is for anybody local, you know. Um, me, the band, me and the band I'm in have a gig, and we're gonna be playing on the th on Halloween. It's gonna be at the Fire Wheel, which is a coffee shop that's in uh, Everett. So if you guys can bring friends or something, I mean, come see us play. I would really appreciate it. Um, but again, only if you're local. I mean, you don't have to go if you don't want. I'm not, not that I'm not inviting you, but I know some people don't want to make the trip down to, you know, 30 minutes from here, and you know. Problem is, play, a lot of places in Seattle, you know, require you to have kind of some kind of status before they let you play for them. And so, I don't know. We're, we're moving up though. But another thing we need is band names. If you can think of any good band names, like don't be a smartass. But I mean, I'm just saying, if you can find any good band names for us, I would really appreciate it. And there are a couple of videos of us performing on Facebook, but I don't know how to download videos from Facebook. But um. Someone knows how to do it. You, you know, your friends will be on Facebook. You can go to my timeline and you can, you know, download it and put it on YouTube. I mean, that's exposure for us. I mean, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate any exposure. And you know, you guys know I don't even ask for subscribers. You know, guys don't even. I don't ask for likes or anything. But I do ask for exposure for my band because you know I, I believe this is what I'm destined to do the rest of my life, and I, I really want to do it the rest of my life. And I've, you know made so many promises to God, but... Yeah, if you guys if you guys can get us known a little bit, I, that'd be pretty cool. But like I said, first I think we need a band name before we even do any of that. So, um... Okay, so now I'm done, and I hope you guys enjoyed the Five Nights at Freddy's videos. And there, I, I'm hoping to do more, but uh, I just don't know when I'm going to do it. And FNAF4, like I said, I... I, I'll admit, I think I do want to play it, but it's just, I, I don't want to buy a game from a guy who's not even going to tell me the rest of what's going on in the game. I think that's kind of crappy, and again, I know some people like that. I know some people like the suspense or the mystery, and that's fine, but I personally don't. So, I don't know. But, okay, I think that's about it. Um, thank you guys for watching, and got a couple bass guitar lessons I want to do and but like I said I'm trying to get back in the um, the gaming related channel and that's actually pretty funny because I just got doom and yeah if this game works on 7 and it works on a uh, and you know OBS works with it I'm pretty sure I will be doing at least some video about this um, that'd be pretty cool um, yeah I think that's it though thank you guys so much for watching and I appreciate your time I will see you guys later peace out God bless, and have a great one. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. I'll see you later.